Hello, hi guys. <laughs> Hello, a lot of friends. Um, very happy to see you. Uh, so we're going to talk about space, sustainability, and the Earth. So basically, from space to herd, uh, Earth, sorry, how we can build sustainable worlds. Um, ah. Yes. <laughs> okay, some technical issue, but basically, uh, waiting for the slides to come, but. I've been asked many, many times how, why are we investing so much money into space where there is so much that we can do on Earth right now? And I'm trying to explain, what I'm trying to do with this representation is actually to explain that there is like a common ground and that we can gather all the technology that we put into space and we can bring that back on Earth for more sustainability. So investing in space and making this place, Earth, a good place for humans to live sustainably, this is not like the opposite. This is exactly what I'm trying to do. So, okay. Yeah, it's working better. Um, so I will start, yeah, with this picture. Um, so this picture, I don't know if you know it, it's called the Earth Rise picture. So it was taken by astronauts where they went sent to the moon. So it was taken on the 24th of December, 1968, so basically 50 years ago. It was the first time we humans experienced see the Earth from like space. Um, and interestingly, at this time, NASA was absolutely not interested in taking any picture of the Earth and just interested in taking picture of the moon. So the astronauts, they were just like shooting the moon and taking like a lot of picture for like an hour and they got very bored and then suddenly out of the blue, you get like this pale blue dot coming out, which was the Earth. And so they went to explore the moon, but the thing that we discover when we went to space is actually we discover the Earth. Uh, so for the past 50 years, we dedicated most our space technology and space innovation into exploring the planet and looking and studying the planet. So we went to the moon 50 years ago, then we stopped going to the moon and we started looking at our planet, trying to study its climate and how it goes. This picture also was taken uh, in 1972, it's called um, the Blue Marble, um, and it actually, after 1972, the, a lot of like environmentalist movement started because this picture brought the awareness for us human that we live on one planet and so we are one species on only one planet. So it was kind of very inspiring and, and, and also it generates something, space give us perspective, a different perspective on how we can look at us on this planet and really realize that we humans are attached and we are coming off Earth, so we are made from nature. So we eventually should behave more in accordance and in harmony with our environment. So space is actually bringing us this new perspective, uh, this overview, and, and this is one thing maybe you don't know about, but it's called the overview effect. So most of the astronauts, what they experience when they go into space is this overview effect. So they just leaving the planet, going off planet on the International Space Station. They look at the Earth. They see this like beautiful blue planet, completely unique in the humanity of the universe that is very, very dark. And they realize how connected they are to the Earth. And when they come back, like 90% of the astronauts, they are all en environmentalists and they are all trying to make this place a better place. So space exploration brings us a new perspective, an overview on our planet and a reflection on who we are humans when we go off planets. Um, so when we went to space, we learned about the air, uh, the air of our planet. Uh, actually, I don't know if you know about that, but 52% of the oxygen we're breathing is coming from the ocean. The diatomy, very small animals that are living in the ocean. Um, they actually got fed by the forest of Amazonia that is carrying nutrients um, through the ocean and because of the rain, it goes directly to the diatomy that produces the oxygen. So it's a very complex ecosystem that we're living in, our biosphere. And so from the plants to the animals, to the reptiles, to like all this energy, our planet is like thriving and bursting with life. And it's a very complex closed loop ecosystem that because we went into space during the past 50 years, we've been able to study it. And most of the data that we have right now um, especially regarding um, um, uh, climate change, sorry, and how, and how the climate is changing and evolving is, is coming from satellites and from us being into space. Uh, so Earth is a very close loop ecosystem. It's a multiplicity of bio, geo, chemical cycles that are basically maintaining the balance of nature. And we unfortunately humans forgot about that and are destabilizing this balance of nature. 
Um, and it's the only sustainable bioregenerative life support system we know. Okay, let me pause here and give you a little bit of explanation what is a, a bioregenerative. Um, so first, life support system. So life support system, it means that Earth is providing Earth us with what we need to live. So basically, air, water, and food. Um, um, bioregenerative, it means that it's regenerate our, itself um, and that there is like no waste in nature, basically, and sustainable because it's it lasting in the f like forever in the future, and it's a completely closed loop system, bioregenerative, supporting our life. Um, there is no waste in nature, only food, and maybe if we can take a little bit of this in our and apply that to the way we design buildings or we grow food and agriculture, we can change a little bit of uh, of the impact that we have on the climate. Um, so. What does Earth and the International Space Station have in common? They are both life support systems. So they are both providing what, need, what is needed for human to, to breathe, to live, to eat, uh, but in a very different way. So Earth is, as I was saying, completely bioregenerative, and the International Space Station is a very complex combination of hardware and devices that are producing the air, the water, and the food. Um, but the International Space Station is ab absolutely, let's say, not sustainable, uh, not bioregenerative, and it's a very open supply approach. So I don't know if you know about that, but the way so basically to have water on the water uh, on the sorry on the International Space Station, we need to send tanks of water. Then when the tanks arrive, the water is completely recycled inside the International Space Station. Um, and actually, the astronauts, they are drinking, so we make water out of the air inside the space station. So you have like concentrate, the water condensate, and then they take the water back and reuse it and recycle it. On the American side, Americans are actually drinking their own pee that is purified and clarified. On the Russian side, they don't drink their own pee, so which is like they're kind of a competition between astronauts. Are you drinking your pee? No, I'm not. I'm on the Russian side, so it's kind of a a thing. Um, and then when it comes to the air, so they use the water and, and reverse, um, um, and from water, combining it with electricity, then we can generate oxygen and hydrogen. Hydrogen is released in space, and oxygen is used for the space station. Um, so we provide oxygen, water, and the food is absolutely not sustainable. It's basically a space shuttle at the time. Now it's more SpaceX going there and bringing the payload with a lot of like Leophilized fuel. So the way we approach living in space was not sustainable, was very much open supply, um, and we didn't know how to remove and recycle the human waste. Right now in the space station, when they go to the bathroom, it's just washed up into space or it's packed and shipped back on Earth, which is completely insane. They're shipping back the, the, the poop of the astronauts back on Earth. Um, so <laughs> I know, it's weird. So, it's, so it was not designed in a very sustainable way, and, uh, but, but there is, we're entering a new space. We're entering a new age in the space industry, because now it's not much more about going you know, on lower Earth orbits and looking at the planet and, and studying the planets. It's about going back to the moon. And this time, the goal is to stay. So it's basically to build and to design a lunar base for humans so we can leave and we can go to the moon and we can do stuff there. And it's going to happen, like it's really happening. I, I can tell you, I'm working on it. Um, and we're also preparing for Mars. So the moon is gonna be more in five years from now and Mars is gonna be more in 10 to 15 years. NASA just announced that they want people to be on Mars by 2033. Um, and Elon is, is um, uh, planning on sending people to the moon in 2023. So it's like very, very soon. So we're gonna leave that. Eventually we'll be all together in the same room watching humans going back to the moon. But this time we are doing it in a very different way. So it's not only just to go there and to walk, it's to build a human civilization. So this is, um, uh, this, is, um, uh, uh, this, was, this is a SpaceX simulation of how eventually a civilization on Mars can look like. But basically what we need to become a multi-planet species to be the transportation system, the infrastructure, the communication, the habitats. So we need to cover all the human basic physiological needs so we can live on another planet. What I'm interested in is eventually building a civilization on Mars, but I'm more interested in looking at the way we design, we design sorry, things for space and apply that back on Earth. Because so this is the, uh, the last um, uh, design that won the uh, NASA competition. These are houses that are 3D printed. I mean, it's much less fun than Earth. 
let's be honest, but <laughs> that's cool too. This one is a pretty cool ice dome using ice to protect us from like the solar radiation um, with a, a biosphere, uh, with a greenhouse inside the, inside the habitats. Um, so, but this time, so as I was saying, the way we design habitats for the moon and for Mars is bio-regenerative. Compared to the International Space Station, as I was telling you, which is like pretty much open supply and we're sending stuff and we're bringing stuff back, this time what we're working on is designing habitats so we don't need to send everything there. So we, we want to design habitats where we can put plants inside so they will generate water, they will generate oxygen, and they will generate food, which is a complete different approach from what it used to be in space. And actually, by this approach, we can use the way we design habitats in a very sustainable way for space and to use that back on Earth. Um, so because when we're thinking about how we want to do that over there, we're thinking about air purification system, food production, water recycling, waste management, clean energy, all those issues that we are facing right now because of climate change. So what we need for life on other planets is actually what we need to protect right now on Earth. And so there is a common ground between space exploration and bringing more sustainability to our planet. Um, so that's Biosphere 2. That was an experience that was done in the 80s, um, in the 90s, story, to trying to recreate the Earth and to develop everything in a very sustainable housing habitat. Um, it was kind of successful, but we learned a lot of things. And we study how we can use the human as a machine to you know, to recycle the waste, to eat, and how the human is a very important component on how we build the habitats and the housing system around it. Um, so, and this is an example on how we can, on, yeah, how we can use basically some of the technology that we use in space and apply that back on Earth. The water recovery system that I was talking about in the International Space Station, we can take part of it. We don't have to drink our own pee, we are on Earth. But we can recycle all the water from like the dishwasher, from, from, from the shower, from the bathroom. We can also recycle the water from the kitchen. If we take all those pipes and we gather them all together, then we can grow plants out of it that will purify the air of the house. And you can eat your own food more locally that you're growing with your own water. So it's a very, if we manage to gather and to take the same approach that we have for habitat on space, we can build amazing habitats on Earth. And that's actually what we're doing. Um, so I'm using space, I'm using space and I see space as an opportunity for humans to try to figure out how to build amazing houses so we can live sustainably but also very comfortable. Uh, so living sustainably doesn't mean like we don't want comfort, it's very important to gather both of them. And so from Mars to Earth there is an in-between and we can try mixing both two words. Um, and yeah, I think I'm running out of time. But so, inspired by hers, made for space, and applied on Earth, we want to make life sustainable on any planet, and we start with this one. Voila, thank you. <laughs> thank you.